let's see what ed headlines we're waking up to this morning. Okay, well, <laughs> plan B moves ever closer, doesn't it? As a new coronavirus scariant, I mean variant, of course, is announced. Omicron, which many point out, and they certainly are in the comments, is an anagram of moronic. And it now has three confirmed cases in the UK and 10 worldwide. We're told this is more deadly, more contagious, more resistant to the jabs than any of the other variants. Well, as Sean, a regular viewer, pointed out, let's look at the name for a start. OMI. It, it, the definition of OMI, O-M-I, is old myocardial infarction, which is heart disease. And the definition for CRON, C-R-O-N, is a command to an operating system or server for a job that is to be executed at a specified time. I thought that was really interesting. And Sean wonders if Omicron is here to explain away the heart problems we are hearing so much about. I think that's a good point. Um, from tomorrow, masks will become compulsory in England over this uh, Omicron variant concerns. Also, the Queen has been removed as head of state from Barbados as it becomes a republic and not before time. The royal family, as we know, have trampled all over the world, uh, claiming what doesn't belong to them. And now it's time to pay the piper, frankly. And let us not forget, today is the opening of the Ghislaine Maxwell trial. We shall be following this on rise. She's accused of six counts, including enticement of minors and sex trafficking of children between 1994 and 2004. She denies all accusations. If convicted, she could face up to 80 years. On the eve of the trial, information has started to seep out. Um, and it actually emerged that uh, Maxwell had placed three job ads in Florida newspapers in 1997, looking for staff to answer phones during school holidays. Obviously, Epstein had a mansion in Florida, and this was said to be at the height of the period when Maxwell, uh, Maxwell was allegedly trafficking girls for Epstein, and job seekers were given a phone number to contact Miss Maxwell. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what goes on in this trial. We had a sort of, you know, gave a, a, a brief overview on Friday, and this Friday coming, we'll have much more to say about it, because obviously the trial will then have, uh, have been going for some days. Also, um, oh, th now this actually really is so infuriating, it's unbelievable. From today, children are again forced to wear masks at school at the threat of, you know, all their Christmas activities being stopped, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the great hypocrisy is this doesn't impact the education secretary, Nadim Zawi, who last night was uh, at the teaching awards. Uh, glamorous occasion it was to celebrate teachers and educational staff dining uh, entertainment dancing you know having a great time none of them wore masks none of them social distance but today they'll be forcing children just to do just that it's fairly disgusting it's really just rubbing it all in our faces really or it is as dr bruce scott would tell us menticide and I just want to say it takes a village to make this show. Um, while the operation itself is obviously primarily me, um, there's so much more that goes into me being here. I am informed by many, many people of uh, events around the world, and I am grateful. Please continue. Um, it, it, it really is important because, you know, I'm, I'm not uh, sort of operating in a void. And, uh, you know, many hands make light work, I think they, they say. Um, so don't forget, there's the unusual symptoms of the mutant COVID strain, uh, the South African doctor said of Omicron, um, the early signs are mild and patients do not lose their sense of smell, but it would appear they do lose their common sense. Um, right, so let's move on without further ado um, to our, to our um, news reviewer, Ian Muir. And I just want to say just quickly before we do, and that is I want to experiment with our breakfast show, see what works, what doesn't. Um, I basically want to create a breakfast show that I would like to watch myself. Some of my tries will be outside the line, as Natasha Bedingfield once said, I want to test ideas, theories within the law, but still be able to discuss and debate what is often frowned on in legacy media. And one of those such stories is Pizzagate, which we will be covering today. The BBC discredited it, of course, that means nothing because the BBC are discredited. And especially when it comes to child abuse, I won't have the BBC telling me anything. Well, they still got that Eric Gill 
statue at the front of Broadcasting House. Eric Gill, of course, was a known paedophile, as well as raping his own sister and I believe raping his dog. Um, and uh, there is the uh, Eric Gill statue at the front of Broadcasting House of the, of the little boy and uh, penis showing, etc., etc. BBC. What can we say? Anyway, uh, and one final thing, and that is, as I say, it takes a village to raise us. And uh, Craig Campbell, who is not only my friend, but also often in the comments, sent me, he found this book by Dr. Shillery Jones um, called What's the Alternative? And it was for absolutely years ago. And Hillary is talking about alternative medicine, which is hilarious, because as we all know, uh, Dr. Shillery Jones is the number one uh, Big pharma promoter on uh, mainstream media. Well, next to Jeremy Vine and Piers Morgan, of course. 